Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. Today I would like to share with you not only one of my favorite ways to cook in general, but one of the best ways to cook in an RV as well, which is with a crock pot. Cooking with a crock pot is so easy and it renders usually the most delicious results. So let's get started with a recipe that I love for especially at this time of year, creamy pumpkin soup. These are the ingredients that we're going to use. A pie pumpkin, which is not to be confused with a carving pumpkin. They're a little bit smaller and they're sweeter and they have less moisture. You can get these at almost any grocery store at this time of year. Carrots, salt, fennel seed, some ginger, ground turmeric, which is a really great ingredient for reducing inflammation. I love to put it in everything. In fact, I love ground turmeric so much I take it in capsule form. A bay leaf cream if you want it, vegetable broth, and some white wine. However, you don't need all of these ingredients to, you don't, it doesn't have to be fancy or anything. You can use just these ingredients if you really want. All you really need is salt, the vegetables, so the pumpkin and the carrot, and the broth. And you can make a perfectly delicious soup that way as well. Let's take a second and talk about the vegetable broth and which kind to get, where you want to get it at. I get mine at Trader Joe's. I get the vegetable broth that's organic. I do that specifically because the ingredients, you'll find that it does not include MSG, monosodium glutamate, and it also doesn't include natural flavoring. And I just learned that natural flavoring can actually mean monosodium glutamate. So if you're not wanting to get those things, be sure to watch out for natural flavorings. <laughs> So first step, and maybe the hardest, um, and maybe the longest, <laughs> is to peel your pumpkin. And the easiest way in my mind is just to do it with a knife and not a, a vegetable peeler. get your pumpkin peeled then you can cut it up and also cut up the carrots as well. You can actually save the pumpkin seeds that come out of the pumpkin. You can roast them in the oven, put a little bit of pepper on them or salt and have freshly roasted pumpkin seeds. Once you get all the seeds moved out of your pumpkin Go ahead and cut it up into large chunks, about an inch by an inch, and at the same time you can cut up your carrots as well. Alright, so the hard part is done. Now it's just the fun part of putting the flavorings in. So first you're going to want to put your stock in. Go ahead and put all of your vegetable broth in, um, depending on how much you have, or at least enough to cover your vegetables. Then you can put in your salt to taste. So you might just want to put in a little bit now, and then you can add more as it's cooking. Then you can put in some fennel seed. This is one of my favorite ingredients, and possibly an acquired taste. So uh, before you put too much in, make sure you like the smell of it, and if you think it'll go well with pumpkin soup. I like to add a bay leaf to everything. Pretty much all soups, all stocks, roasts, anything like that, I'll put a bay leaf or two in. And ginger powder, I will I will use a heavy hand when I put ginger powder in. I do like ginger. And turmeric. This is another one that I will put a lot in just because of its medicinal benefits. And last but not least, some white wine. You can put maybe like a quarter cup in, um, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. All right, that's it. So you just put the lid on, you turn it up to high or low, depending on how long you're going to be cooking. If you've started cooking in the morning and you want to have it done by dinner, you can put it on high. If you want to put it overnight and let it really seep out the flavors of the vegetables, 
then you can put it on low. So then you just let that sit for several hours, probably about four to seven or overnight, and you can test and see throughout its cooking process how it's, how it's moving along. So I just took the soup, and I think it's about ready to put in the blender. If you want, you can actually eat it as it is. It's a nice soup that way too. Um, but I like to put it in the blender, get it all mushed up, and then put cream in. There's actually a funny story behind my blender. I used to live in a small town, and the town was divided into quarters. And every week, so once a month, each quarter would have what's called bulk trash, and people could put out large items that the trash people would carry away. Well, um, at that time I was a student, and I'd go around with my friend in his van, and we would pick up all these items, and then we'd have a garage sale. Well, this blender was one of those items that I picked up in front of somebody's house on the street, and it is the best blender. It's uh, Vitamix and it's super powerful. I absolutely love it. All right, so let's blend it up. When I got the blender, it didn't have a lid, so um, my lid is combined of two different blender lids. So I have to put a towel over it because it doesn't work fully well. <laughs> I'm just going to pour the blended soup back into the crock pot so you can actually continue to heat the soup. You can leave it on and have it, you know, stay warm for a while, or you can just store it in the crock pot um, ceramic bowl. Alrighty, now to add the cream, and that's the last step. And definitely you want to taste your soup and make sure you got enough salt or enough of your favorite flavors. But after that, it's pretty much ready to eat. And now for the best part. Mmm, so good. I hope you try it at home and let me know how it goes in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. Subscribe to my channel for more upcoming videos.